Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Dr. Psych Mom Show. Today, we are going to talk about things that you do that do, in fact, make your wife want less sex, you know? And everything is not about biology, even though I'm a big proponent of knowing what is biological, and we will talk about the interplay between those two variables in a minute, right after I tell you to subscribe. My most recent subscriber episode was Don't Have Non-Orgasmic Sex Too Often, um, and uh, or How Often Should You, or something like that. And I got loads of other awesome ones. Please do subscribe. The more subscribers I get, the more of these I do. I don't know if y'all have noticed, but I've started to put these out like every day, or sorry, every other day, most of the time, whereas I used to be doing it every three to four after the first season, you know, but the more, it's just like anybody, it's positive reinforcement. So if you like this content, then definitely subscribe. All right, so, okay. I have told you guys about the honeymoon stage so much. I've talked about reasons that it's totally normal that your wife doesn't want as much sex now as she used to um, because, you know, again, for the people in the back, the honeymoon stage is designed to make you feel drunk and giddy and want to breed with your new partner. But the other thing that our species needs is genetic diversity. So it would be best for our species if after the honeymoon stage with you of one and a half to three years, she just moved on and had sex with another guy and raised that guy's baby, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, I recently talked about monogamy. All these people were like, what about the monogamous birds? Well, you think they don't cheat Google anything, Google, which I did. And then I, you know, linked them back to it. Alpha wolves cheat, prairie voles cheat, birds cheat. You know, penguins are only seasonally monogamous most of the time. Sometimes they re-up. That's like the marital contract that people want. Like after 10 years, you're like, do I want to do this anymore? You know, but if it's only a season for the penguins, there are no animals that don't cheat at all. And the fact that people would think that in the wild, there's animals that don't cheat at all is like something out of a Disney movie. But anyway, point is, you know, monogamy is tough. And in fact, humans cheat less than these supposedly monogamous animals of multiple species. So since I've, you know, what I didn't want was for men to think, oh my God, it's all my fault that she won't have sex with me. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to work out 17 times a week and I'm going to use more uh, alpha dominant language and then I'm going to hack her brain and and convince her that I'm a new person. I mean, that's like, like, you know, not going to work. And also makes everybody crazy, makes the woman crazy, makes the man crazy, gets depressed when it doesn't work, um, et cetera, et cetera. So while this is a, a good, you know, feeder into therapy, who cares? Like, I want people to do better in their lives. And that is Becoming aware of reality usually helps you to be in a better and more objective and healthy place in your own mind and in your own relationship. So while certainly there ain't nothing you could do that's going to make your wife act like it's the honeymoon stage unless you lace her shit with testosterone and even then she's going to grow more aggressive as well and that wasn't like the honeymoon stage but um (laughs) but of course talk to your medical doctor about any questions you have about hormone replacement therapy um but point is there's no free lunch as I talk about all the time and so if you think that your wife's gonna act like she did in the honeymoon stage if you just hack her system you're not acting like you were either and you know what if you did she still wouldn't act like she did and if she did you still wouldn't act like you did because that's fantasy that's the same Disney movie as all these monogamous animals that never cheat on each other and you know it isn't real However, (laughs) you know, however, yes, her sex drive is going to go down, just like your romantic drive is going to go down unless you're super preoccupied and then you're not coming off romantic, you're coming off weird. And I talk about preoccupied attachment all the time, you know, go back to all those uh, podcasts. But there are still many things that you could do that make her not want to have sex as much. So yeah, in the honeymoon stage, you could have been having sex like three times a day and now it could be three times a week. But because you are acting in ways that I'll describe, it's only once every other week. So you're lower than what her set point would be after, you know, the honeymoon stage or even if she's perimenopausal or even if she's menopausal, right? 
And there was an interesting um, discussion in my Facebook secret group, which, of course, you should all join about the difference between the honeymoon stage and not. You know, like uh, somebody said, because we do a question of the day, what's the difference between how often you're having sex in the honeymoon stage and afterwards? And a lot of people are like, went from multiple times a day to multiple times a week. That's pretty, you know, normal. And, you know, of course, the people that follow me and, of course, the super fans that are going to join the group are more sex positive than normal, right? And a lot of them are more high libido. It's also a place where women who are the higher libido partner feel comfortable talking about that, which I've talked about is about 20% of women or 30%, 30, a third of the women in my office. But it's hard to talk about as a woman because it's so counter to the prevailing, so, you know, media narrative that men are always the sexual um, initiator. So they're even more embarrassed to talk about that their husband doesn't want it, you know, than men are because it's the narrative that women are the ones who say no. But anyway, point being, join the group. But there was a an interesting thread and so all these people went from multiple times a day to multiple times a week. That's normal. But when you go from like multiple times a day to nothing, well, then you know the woman has the capacity to be high libido. You're like, or, or like to every other week or something. Sure, there's a million variables on her end. Maybe she's depressed. Maybe she had a bad pregnancy. Maybe she had, uh, you know, she's anxious. Maybe their kids are in the bed, whatever. I don't know. But but the point is, there's also plenty of shit that the guy is doing that could be making things even worse. So what are the number one things that I see or the top things that I see? Because they can't all be number one. The very first one is the guy's very difficult. And he doesn't understand that after the honeymoon stage hormones wore off and he was walking on air all the time, his natural, more aggressive, difficult, argumentative personality came out. And that's the opposite of the honeymoon stage. That's like a vagina dryer. It's like a blow dryer to the vagina. It's like the worst. So when a guy is considered difficult, aggressive, defensive, that is just, it's it's the opposite. It's like a woman, you know, um, I don't even know what, like... It, <laughs> getting like leprosy or something like it's like you wouldn't you want to sleep with your wife right yeah what if her limbs were just falling off randomly like maybe not so that's what it is for the personality if the personality is aggressive difficult argumentative devil's advocate all these things that I talk about in the rubric of difficult she doesn't want sex she doesn't want anything because her body's telling her get away it's an aggressive predator it's it's uh, somebody who's not safe you know, like really not safe because who talks to you like that? Somebody who hates you. So if you ever talk to your wife like you hate her or if she said stuff like that, you don't act like you like me. She, of course, doesn't want to have sex with you because women need to feel warm and close and relaxed to have sex. So that's the number one thing that guys really underestimate the impact of, you know, and that's like a big way that guys change after the honeymoon stage because guys are like, oh, change after the honeymoon stage. I didn't change at all. Now, on the one hand, they could be saying this while they're watching two hours of porn a day and they're on testosterone replacement therapy um, and they have Viagra. So that's a situation that I covered in the podcast, why men nowadays don't know that drive drops after the honeymoon stage versus guys in previous generations. Um, but there's also, they're not thinking about the ways that their personality changed after the honeymoon stage. They used to be, oh, yeah, sure, you want to go out to eat? Oh, cool. Oh, here, I just bought you this gift because I was thinking of you. Oh, tell me again about the story from work with your friend. Oh, how is she doing with, you know, being pregnant? And now you, like, literally don't talk to her. You look down on her. You make snide remarks. You feel that you do this, possibly, if you're even tangentially, remotely aware of it, you would say it's because she doesn't have sex with you, but you don't think about the chicken and the egg, right? Maybe she wasn't having sex with you when you turn into a big asshole. So it's probably both things are happening at once. And the number one thing I've seen improve sex lives in therapy is when the guy starts to be nicer and to realize not to be so much of a dick all the time. Right. Or any of the time, maybe if he's really uh, awesome and he's really a good therapy student, then he just stops kind of being a dick. And of course, that takes a lot of hard work, but it's worth it because your kids don't like it when you're a dick either. And everything goes a lot better if you're not difficult, argumentative, aggressive and all the shit that you learn from your family of origin. Next one is hygiene. It's so crazy that I still have to say this and I do. And it's fine. It's no judgment. But like, you know, people do not understand this, particularly if they were raised in as adult children of dysfunctional families where there was some neglect. Basically, there was like a very laissez faire 
uh, you know, at best and neglectful at worst style. They don't know you're supposed to brush your teeth twice a day. They don't know you're supposed to shower every day. They did that stuff in the honeymoon stage because it was part of like getting ready for dates and knowing you're going to have sex and stuff. But after that, it went away. And the clothes are very old. The person doesn't smell very good. They look greasy. They look grubby. It's like no woman's going to sleep with that. You know, so, and this is one, ironically, women will say to the guy, you're being an asshole, but they usually will not say, your dental hygiene is terrible. You you're, you don't smell good. You need to shower more often. They'll say it a little bit sometimes, but it's like so embarrassing and like, just like, it feels embarrassing, honestly, to be married to a person who doesn't do that for many women. They're like, why should I even do this? It makes me feel like his mommy. And I was shocked when I started in couples therapy, how many people would tell me this, that the guy doesn't brush his teeth, you know, and it's a thing. So if that's you, that's a number one way immediately to start improving your relationship is hygiene. And it's so much more common than you think. If you're a guy that does it, then you'd be as surprised as I was originally. But I'll tell you, it's a big problem for a lot of people. And okay, so we got difficult, we got bad hygiene, and then we have the little boy slash jokey man thing. And I talked about this, about the joking around, uh, what did I call it? Goofy, goofball. When your identity is a goofball, then your marriage is like not going to work out. So yeah, difficult and being an aggressive asshole is bad. You're not going to get laid. But on the other end of the extreme, being like a dog that's always showing its belly, always, oh, don't take me seriously. I'm not a real, you know, important player here in the world. I'm just this goofy guy, you know, and I just, you know, hang out. That's what I do. I don't really get proactive or really into anything particularly. I don't take anything too seriously. I'm ironic about basically everything. And I'm not like a real person, you know, or anything. Don't give me any pressure here, you know. And this is always associated with low self-esteem. It's somebody who like doesn't want to even be made fun of for taking themselves seriously as a person. So they just kind of make jokes and go with the flow and they they don't have anything they're passionate about. They don't have any values that they are espousing. They would never have a serious conversation. Almost never would they initiate one really for many guys like this. Never truly. They have never initiated a serious conversation with another human being. And so the wife doesn't take them seriously. How could you have sex with a man that's almost like a caricature? It's almost like a cartoon, you know? And guys like this really need to be in therapy for, like, understanding why do you take this role of this, like, observer, like, audience member, you know, versus, like, you know, main character energy, like, in your own life, The guy's in his own life. This guy's not a protagonist. He's a supporting actor in his own life. Doesn't take himself seriously. He's always a second in command. First to like a best friend, then to a boss, then to a wife and never really kind of comes forward and owns his own life and his own identity. It's always like the the assistant. You know, he's always like Dwight to, you know, the what was the guy, the boss in the office? Michael, was it? Um, But anyway, that's who he always is. But Dwight actually was, you know, had his own shit going on. (laughs) And that's why he was attractive to Angela. But so it's not even that. It's just just a kind of a not, you know, the kids call it now non-playable character. I think I said this before in a podcast because I always use a term a lot when I learn it. So somebody who does not feel as important enough to like have opinions, make decisions, kind of have a, you know, be ambitious in any regard. Somebody would never say, oh, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to run this race or I'm going to, you know, lose 20 pounds or I'm going to get a promotion or I'm going to start a side business or, you know, I'm going to teach our kid, you know, how to do the butterfly in the pool, you know, whatever. A person who doesn't really take initiative of anything is obviously not very attractive and it cannot be taken seriously sexually. And then, of course, people would say, well, what about the woman? I talk about what women doing wrong all the damn time in these situations. He was difficult at first. You knew it. You're a people pleaser. Go to therapy. In the second one, you knew at the beginning he didn't necessarily have the hygiene at the level that you wanted it, even from dating. Certainly wasn't as bad as now. But again, people pleaser couldn't say it. I'm probably sex negative and thought, well, who cares? I don't even want to have sex with him anyway. And in the last case, Obviously, who gets with a man who is a supporting actor, 
a main character actress who may tend a bit toward the narcissistic and definitely a person who just wants shit done the way she wants it until later in life she realizes, oh my God, I don't even have a partner. I just have another child. So that's what's wrong with the woman in all those situations. So obviously there's something wrong with both people in every unhappy marriage. But if you're a man and you're listening to this, those three things are what you should be tackling in your own therapy. And if some of them made you uncomfortable, those are the ones to tackle first. And you don't need therapy to work on your hygiene, right? I mean, if you keep falling off the wagon with it, then something else is going on. And also bad hygiene is, um, goes along with ADHD, goes along with depression. For obvious reasons. ADHD, you literally forget to do it. So you would need to figure out a a way to remind yourself to do it and to understand the urgency of doing it, et cetera, et cetera. And with depression, you need to be treating your depression because with depression, you could lay around dirty all the time and it feels very, very difficult to move forward in any way, even to get into the shower. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you found it useful and interesting and gave you something to think about. It's not all biology. Biology is huge. But there's also like just things that women hate. Difficult, dirty, passive men. I think that would summarize it, right? Would you like a difficult, dirty, passive woman? Maybe passive, you wouldn't mind. You certainly wouldn't like difficult and dirty. So, you know, I mean, you got to think about it. And it's true. Their people are below the baseline of what they would have gotten to in a best case scenario. What your job is, is to maximize what the best case scenario post honeymoon stage could be. So multiple times a day going to multiple times a week. That makes sense. Multiple times a day going to zero doesn't make sense. Then there are empathic ruptures. There are major other issues. Or there's one of these top three on the man's end. All right. Hope you guys found this useful and practical. I try to give you practical, concrete things to work on. And uh, if you ever need a therapist or coach, Best Life Behavioral Health is my practice. Everybody can't work with me. Some people can. Um, But there are many other people that I have vetted that are great. And I'll talk to you all soon, guys. Have an awesome day.